Hi, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth. So I'm watching on Sky News uh, live in St. Petersburg, where there's protest against the Ukrainian war in Russia. It's interesting to see how the police just charge at people, ordinary citizens. I mean, I know we see that in the West. I guess that's the thing. I know I often talk about the system and, and how humanity could be better, and I still do believe that. I, I do believe that the, the system that we have, I'm not saying it's... That, that's what I'm trying to say here, that I know the system that we have is a workable system, and especially it depends where you live, though, really. If you live in the West, Western Hemisphere, you know, in Europe and America and places like that, then the system is working better for you. And, of course, it also depends on a lot of other factors as well, how well it works for you, depending on divisions uh, between us that have been set by people hundreds of years ago. Um... Yeah, and when you see other countries like in in, uh, in Russia, how you know the, the how it's treated when you try and protest, how it's difficult and it's gonna it maybe endanger your life or an imprisonment for speaking out about things that in the West, yes, we're allowed to to say those things, um, and truly, people shouldn't be worried about thoughts and words. Um, because that's how we change. Because, of course, if you have some some people or a, a system where it's very tough and they are trying to control those things, that's why they don't allow people freedom of thought and freedom of expression to try and hold on to this power. I mean, I was just hearing it now. I'll just play a little bit in here. They're quite apolitical. And when you talk to them about it, they say, well, I don't really know. I'm not really into politics. Because when you can't change anything in politics, why be political? And then there are the smaller uh, proportion of people who are coming out onto the streets of cities like St. Petersburg, who are coming out here in Moscow, uh, who are risking detentions because it just, I mean, all you have to do is appear uh, and you're detained. And um, and they, they, they think it's worth it. They get their news on the internet. They, you know, they get their news via Instagram. They see what's going on. Um, I think a lot of people aren't sure what sources to trust. A lot of people in the middle who say I'm apolitical will also say to you, you know, I don't, I'm told one thing and, and here it says another and I don't really know what to believe. Well, that is, that is the nature of a state that has fed its people propaganda for so many decades since Soviet times. Um, that its people don't really know how to investigate or interrogate news sources. Um, so I, I think that's the picture, you know, it's, it's not clear. And a lot of people, unfortunately, because of the propaganda that they're fed, uh, believe that what Putin is doing is the right thing. And a lot of people think it's unconscionable because they have relatives and friends and Ukraine is an incredibly close country and they do see that he is uh, moving in on the whole country rather than just a limited operation as he's pitched it. Yeah, um, we uh, we'll sit on these pictures just uh, for a moment, Diana, from uh, St. Petersburg. There's uh, loads of riot police uh, now uh, there. Um, there's some words coming out through uh, Reuters, in fact. Let me just uh, update uh, our viewers uh, to do with President Putin, who uh, it appears, uh, according to these reports, has ordered the military command to put nuclear deterrence forces on high alert after what he has called aggressive statements by NATO countries. We uh, can see uh, the Russian uh, president there uh, briefing his uh, generals. So that could be a sign of a potentially worrying escalation, uh, these reports coming in. And we're waiting for exactly for a translation to hear what he has uh, to, to say, but it looks like he has uh, ordered his uh, military command, his generals, to put nuclear deterrence forces on high alert after what he calls uh, various statements by NATO countries. So. Uh, clearly to do with uh, continuing tensions and increasing tensions, and uh, if so, that would uh, signal a dramatic and uh, worrying escalation in the conflict uh, with uh, Ukraine. Uh, we'll monitor uh, what uh, the President of Russia is saying and bring you the latest as it develops. But uh, here, two church services have been offering prayers for those fighting in Ukraine. Let's go to Sky's Aisha Zahid, who's in central London. Afternoon to you, Aisha. What's happening where you are? 
Well, it's been an incredibly emotional mass this morning here. The Holy Family Cathedral is the largest gathering place for the Ukrainian community in the UK. And at the mass service this morning, uh, there was the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK in attendance alongside other dignitaries as well. Uh, and in the sermon delivered by the uh, Roman Catholic Archbishop of Southwark, he spoke about how everyone loses in war and the fact that uh, war leads to the face of humanity becoming disfigured. So some powerful words. There was a lot of emotion, some people becoming visibly upset. Uh, now I'm joined by one of the bishops at the church. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, so okay, so that's enough of that. So we can see that uh, my, my previous uh, YouTube video, whatever you want to call them, Pursuit of the Truth, um, asking the question, is this the beginning of World War Three? has got a little bit more real with this if this Reuters translation of his statement is true. I mean, I wouldn't expect Reuters to, to mistranslate, but I guess it is possible. Um, Sky running it anyway, but suggesting that he's getting the nuclear weapons on standby. <laughs> That's a very worrying statement, isn't it? Let's hope uh, he's not too trigger happy. We don't want to go back to the, was it the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, which was averted, to, to repeat that again. Imagine if that was the case, if, you know, like I was saying, this could be the beginning. And it, it, I mean, we're, we're in the West, I shouldn't say we're, because not me, but NATO countries are trading very carefully by only doing sanctions and not well, they are giving weapons and things to the Ukrainians, but they're not sending their troops there because they know if they did that, that would give him the ability to, to launch a, a, a war against the West, as it were. But, of course, we're assuming that he would wait and that he wouldn't see this as a provocation, the economic sanctions, the, the, the support for Ukraine, the military support might be enough for him to just launch a nuclear weapon uh, and of course that would be devastating for well, the people that it lands on and for years to come the people surrounding and would change our world I mean it, it, we, we saw how Covid changed our way of life and is still affecting us to actually have a nuclear war which we've never really had I mean yes they were used in the, the end of the Second World War but it wasn't in the same it wasn't the beginning of a war it wasn't in the same way, if a nuclear bomb, which are a lot stronger than those ones, were dropped on a Western country, and what the reply would be if it was dropped on the UK or America or somewhere in Europe, which you'd assume would be the target, would that then enable, thank God, <laughs> Donald Trump isn't the president of America, um, a Western leader to also launch a retaliatory nuclear weapon. And of course, that would then, you know, once that's done, I mean, it'd be very difficult not to do it because those passions and those fears of the people would push that decision. But that decision is actually the wrong decision because that would then, well, it would allow everyone to just start firing their nuclear weapons at each other. And, this, imagine this is the end of humanity. Imagine you, you've woke... Well, for people in Ukraine, that must be how it feels. And people in war-torn countries, that must be how it feels every day. In Palestine and places like that, where there, there are always fears of bombs and wars and killings and things. But imagine that's how... You, know, you wake up one day and the world is, you know, and everything. And then the next day we're destroying each other. But it wouldn't surprise me because, like I say, in the system that we live in, that's what's bred. We, we, we've, we, we're allowed to have weapons. We're allowed to have uh, things that could destroy humanity. We don't take care of the planet and each other. We're very bad stewards, shepherds, whatever you want to call us, of this place that we found ourselves upon. Anyway, with that worrying thought, take care, take it easy, God bless, and peace. Okay, so just to... Uh, to mention, uh, so from the last one, I haven't even put it uploaded yet, but they've actually now got the speech that Reuters were talking about. 
uh, where Vladimir Putin is, is using the word nuclear. Of course, it could just be uh, a tactic to scare the West. It will definitely scare the West. I suspect everyone's going to be on high alert now. The only worry is that, uh, that people in power, well, I don't know, that, that, that they can they be trusted not to press the button to try and always find peaceful means? I would hope so, because any launching of one nuclear weapon, let alone retaliatory ones as well, is a loss of millions of people's lives, a devastation that we can't, it wouldn't be easy to come back for. But uh, no, this is this is when you when you, you know we can't only but blame ourselves because we've allowed as human beings each one of us with individual responsibility a world that um, allows a system where we allow the manufacture of things that have no place to be manufactured that unless they were for energy unless they were for for benefiting mankind things to kill mankind guns weapons. You know, all these things that people see as their freedom, as their right to uh, hold, they wouldn't necessarily, wouldn't need it if we lived in a world where, is it possible to live in a world without crime? I believe it is, because I don't think it intrinsically is within us. A lot of it, I think, is bred through, uh, you know, people who don't bring up children properly, um, and a lot of it is more to do with the system that we live within, because of money, because of greed, because of possessions, because of not having things. You know, anyway, let's hear the speech. This is Vladimir Putin. Let's see if he does use the word nuclear. It is translated by someone, so we're assuming that they're translating it truthfully. The war with Ukraine. Let us listen uh, to what Vladimir Putin had had to say uh, in the last few minutes. Dear colleagues, as you can see, Western countries are not only taking unfriendly economic steps against our country, I mean, il the illegitimate sanctions everyone knows about. Highest ranking officials of the leading NATO countries are also allowing themselves to make aggressive statements in relation to our country. For this reason, I order the Minister of Defense and the Chief of General Staff to put deterrent forces of the Russian army on special combat standby duty. Uh, well, there's some words there from uh, President Putin. European Union foreign ministers are going to meet today to decide what further sanctions to impose on... Did he say nuclear? I didn't actually hear that clearly, yeah? Against our... country. I mean, il the illegitimate sanctions everyone knows about. Highest ranking officials of the leading NATO countries are also allowing themselves to make aggressive statements in relation to our country. For this reason, I order the Minister of Defense and the Chief of General Staff to put deterrent forces of the Russian army. I didn't say nuclear, did it? Take your leave, God bless and peace.